Well, I'm so excited today about what God is doing. I don't know where you are in your walk with the Lord, but I say that as you've entered into a new season, even a new year, a year that is promising God's goodness to overflow in each one of our lives, this is a year that we're going to see the spiritual gifts begin to arise in a whole new way. And I'm talking about not only the gifts that he has given unto us in men, but I'm talking about the gifts of the spirit as well. And one of the things that I love to talk about is one of my favorite subjects is to talk about the gift of tongues. And so I'm gonna talk about that a little bit today because in this season, we need to operate so much in the supernatural realm that has been made available to us that we're going to need to even purify our prayer life, not allow it to be a prayer life that comes out of our head, a prayer life that comes out of our emotions, a prayer life that comes out of our feelings, but a prayer life that comes straight out of the spirit. The Bible tells us so much about this awesome gift of tongues, and it is certainly a controversial issue in the body of Christ, but it really should not be. Listen to um, a little bit of what uh, God had been sharing with me, even with previous times that I've taught on the gifts of the Spirit, and it's always been so interesting to me to hear what all God would say to me concerning that. But it says here in one of the uh, times that I really meditated before the Lord as it relates to the gift of tongues. Many times as we search for words that our mind can logically understand, we can say all the right things. Now, just think about it. You know you have had prayers that you said all the right things and got no results. I mean, you dotted every I, you crossed every T, you said everything that, even you, you quoted the scripture, you said everything that the Bible said, but you didn't have the um, wherewithal at that time, even as I did not, to know that God has different situations, different circumstances that he operates differently in from time to time. So it's important that we're able to press in to that realm in the spirit where we know exactly what we need to pray, exactly what we need to come out with. And so you can say all the right things and you can uh, dot every I and cross every T, but do we really believe or have, do we have faith in what we have given mental assent or validation to? Mental assent, think about it. Mental validation, think about it. We think this is right, we believe this is right, and we operate in what sometimes we think is right, but it's not what God is doing in that particular season or that particular time. However, it is not possible to speak in tongues and speak words of doubt and unbelief. So when you speak in tongues, you have done a total yielding to the spirit. You cannot speak doubt. You cannot speak unbelief and speak in tongues. You're totally yielded to the supernatural realm for every utterance that's going to come out of your mouth to every utterance that a believer is only capable of releasing as words of faith. Now, what am I saying? I'm saying that when you and I pray in tongues, we have to so release everything that comes out of our natural mind that we begin to speak in a language that we never learned, a language that can only be released to and through us by the Holy Spirit, you can't get any more submitted than that. As a matter of fact, the next word will not even roll out of your tongue unless you are yielded to the Holy Spirit. And so it's very important that you and I are pressing in in this season to this awesome gift that God has given the body of Christ. There are various ways that this gift is spoken or identified. It is referred to as the promise of the Father, another helper, a comforter, the spirit of truth. It is 
considered to be the Holy Spirit baptism or the Holy Spirit praying in unknown tongues, other tongues, spirit praying. But another way to refer to it is the language of heaven. It is the language of heaven. And that excites me more than anything else to know that we can speak in tongues and pray the language of heaven. Now, let's look at 1 Corinthians 12. And I'm going to read this out of the Message Bible because I really, really like the Message Bible. It says, what I want to talk to you about now is the various ways that God's Spirit gets worked into our lives. This is complex and often misunderstood. But I want you to be informed and knowledgeable. Remember how you were when you didn't know God, led from one phony God to another, never knowing what you were doing, just doing it because everyone else did it. It's different in this life, in the spirit. God wants us to use our intelligence to seek to understand as well as we can. For instance, by using your head, you know perfectly well that the Spirit of God would never prompt anyone to say, Jesus be damned, nor would anyone be inclined to say, Jesus is master, without the insight of the Holy Spirit. And so you and I can press into this language and we can know that we're flowing in such a way that we're not speaking against God, but we're speaking along with the flow of the Holy Spirit. It says God's various gifts are handed out everywhere, but they all originate in God's Spirit. So every one of God's gifts originates in the Spirit or by the Spirit of God. So you don't have to be afraid today to say, Spirit of God, baptize me. Fill me with who you are. Why? Because he is always going to hand out something to us that came from him. He's never going to give us anything that is not for our good by the Holy Spirit when our hearts are pure and when we've asked specifically He's not going to do it. The Bible says it like this. If you ask for uh, the Holy Spirit, God's not going to give you a snake. He's not going to give you anything from the devil. And I know I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what the Spirit was saying in that passage of Scripture. God's various ministries are carried out everywhere, but they all originate in God's Spirit. And Leanne was talking about that uh, just a little while ago about everything that God does originating out of Holy Spirit. God's various expressions of power. She talked about power. God's various expressions of power are in action everywhere. So God's always in action. He's always moving. He's always bringing forth momentum. He's always causing spiritual things to manifest and to come to pass. But God himself is behind it all when he's using us. It's still him. He's still doing it. But he's behind it all. Listen, each person is given something to do that shows who God is in their life. What have you been called to do that will express, that will show who God is in your life? God doesn't have any children on vacation. He doesn't have any children that are in a rest home. He doesn't have any children that are laying by the side of the beach doing nothing but letting their day. What, what, what does the song say? Sitting on the dock of the bay, watching the tides roll away. No, God doesn't have any children like that. He has given each one of us an assignment. And we're on assignment today by the Holy Spirit. And one of the most powerful ways to tap in to the revelation of what he has given us is to be able to pray in the Spirit, to be able to pray in tongues. 
Each person is given something to do that shows that God is who God is. Everyone gets in on it. Everyone benefits. All kinds of things are handed out by the Holy Spirit and to all kinds of people. So what am I saying? Uh, do I have to be the most perfect girl on the block for God to use me, for him to hand out his gifts to me? No, the Bible tells me that God's gifts are without repentance. In other words, God does not have changed his mind about the gifts that he wants to give you, that he wants you to use, that you wanna, he wants you to make available to him. He doesn't change his mind about it. He gives gifts to all kinds of people, murderers, thieves, people who have been regenerated, revived and refreshed, use those gifts for the kingdom of God. Well, you think you just got your gift when you got born again? Well, let me say God had a plan for your gift all the time. Even before you were formed in your mother's womb, God had plans for you to walk out the power and the anointing of God. So once you come in to a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, he doesn't just say, hmm, let me see, what am I going to do with that one? No, he already has a plan for you. So I'm encouraging you today to let God use these gifts that he's placed in your life. The variety of what God has done is wonderful. Wise counsel, clear understanding, simple trust, healing the sick, miraculous acts, proclamation, distinguishing between spirits, and then this one that I want to go ahead and hone in on for these last few minutes, tongues and interpretation of tongues. I mean, it is so real in my life. I don't know about you as a believer, but the gift of tongues is available to everyone. However, it is a choice to activate and to move in this gift. God won't move your mouth for you. He will not make you speak in tongues. But when you value what God has done for us and the gift that he has given us, you begin to see how wonderful it is. I'm telling you, I remember when my son, who went through many things in his childhood, and God would use me to intercede for him, to pray for him. Many times I wouldn't know what he was into, but I would begin to pray in tongues, pray in the spirit, and the spirit of the Lord would cause me to have revelation that would rise up in me because I would be praying in tongues. And God would tell me things. I remember they had this place over off of Bel Air, a bisonette that was called Fame City. And one night, my son had gone somewhere. Of course, I was not at home. And my husband had given him permission to go. And when I got home and I asked my husband where he was, he said, well, I told him that he could go. I said, OK. So we sat down to look at television together. And as we were looking at television, all of a sudden, I got up from where we were sitting and I began to prance up and down, 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 up and down in the living room, just praying in the spirit. And I just prayed in tongues and prayed in tongues until all of a sudden revelation began to rise up on the inside of me. And I began to decree, he is safe. He is delivered from the hand of the enemy. I command you to back off of my son. I command you to cease your maneuvers. And I just began to say things out loud. And my husband, of course, then got distracted from what he was looking at on TV. And he said, what in the world is wrong with you? And I said, Sombre shata. something's going on. Something's going on in the spirit. And then the telephone rang. I told my husband, go and answer the phone. I said, that's Troy. And he got up and went and answered the phone, and he came back to me, and he said, Deborah, Troy is over there at Fame City, and a big 
a gang fight has broken out in that building and all of the children begin to be dispersed at one time and they were running throughout the parking lot and as they were running throughout the parking lot some of the children fell some of them got their teeth knocked out some of them got trampled by all of the other children but Troy just called and I had a big smile on my face and I said, tell me the rest of it because I'm telling you, God had worked a miracle. My son told the story later about how he rolled up under a parked car on that parking lot until the, the rampage of the, uh, the stampede subsided. When that stampede subsided, then he got from up under that car, he stepped out on the curb of Beechnut, a Bissonette, wherever that was. But he stepped out on the curve, and when he stepped out on a curve, a car drove up beside him. And here was a man in the car that reached, and you, you know this was a long time ago. They, they, he reached in the pocket that the, they didn't call them cell phones, they called them car phones at that time. And they were just like regular phones. You put them in a, in a little holster. He reached in that holster, picked up that phone that was about this long and handed it out the window to my son. And my son called. And that's what happened that particular day. He called when, as soon as he called, I knew it was him. Because I had been praying in tongues and the Holy Spirit had alerted me. In the natural, I would never have known that this was what was taking place. But when we yield to the Spirit and we pray according to the Spirit, God begins to give us revelation that we wouldn't normally have. That's one of many, 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 many testimonies that I can give you concerning praying in tongues. But let me go on to share some other things with you. There are eight benefits that I've listed here that I want to share with you of praying in tongues. There are eight benefits that you and I can partake of and this is so important that you grasp this because I'm offering you a gift. I know for Christmas you got all kinds of gifts, earthly things, carnal things, things that you'll be able to use in this life things that have no eternal value, and you treasured them. I mean, some of you got on some of the things that you got for Christmas. Some of you are riding in something you got for Christmas. But I want to tell you about a gift and the benefits of that gift that are eternal, that are supernatural, and that will never, ever, ever fail you. Let me share with you. There are eight gifts, I mean there are eight, I'm sorry, there are eight benefits, there's more than eight gifts, but there are eight benefits that I'm going to share with you. You can build on this later. I'm going to uh, take another five minutes and we're going to be closing out, but I'm just encouraging you in you this year, get filled with the Holy Ghost, ask the Lord to come in and, and, and cause you to overflow, cause the Spirit of God to rise up in you in such a way that you'll be able to operate in the supernatural realm in this praying gift that God has, this praying language. Unleash those tongues and let them begin to flow. One of the things that is a benefit of praying in tongues is that you build your faith. The Bible says now you can build up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And so you're going to find that as a great benefit in the days ahead. You already have faith, but you and I need to build up our faith. There are times when our faith starts to dwindle, but you can just begin to go, and before you know it, your faith starts rising and rising and rising and something will come up and you'll be ready to hit that thing head on with the faith of God in you because you've been talking, communicating with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The second benefit, it centers you in God's love. 
And the scripture that you might want to refer to a little later is in Jude. And in Jude, it talks about this mighty, mighty gift. And it tells us that we build up, it's verse 20. It says, maintain your life with God. It says, but you beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping yourselves in the love of God. So what did I say number two is? That you center yourself in God's love when you pray in the Holy Ghost. Then it says, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and on the same have compassion, making a difference, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now let's go on a little further. It keeps you reaching out to others. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, it keeps you reaching out to others. It prepares you, number four, for the outpouring of God's mercy. And number five, it creates compassion in the one who prays in tongues. You and I have compassion. We want to pull people out of the fire. We want to pull them out of the lifestyle that they're in. We want to pull them out of those places in their lives that have them stuck. It also releases an evangelistic thrust. That's number six. We're drawing them in. We're pulling them out of the fire. We're hating the garment that has spotted them, and we want them to be clean and whole so that they can serve the Lord in righteousness. Number seven, it makes one hard on sin but loving toward the sinner. I mean, it balances us. It causes us to hate the sin that we see, but we love the person so much that we reach out to them. I'm gonna tell you one last story here when I give you number eight. It encourages the realization of the supernatural sovereignty of God. It encourages the realization of the supernatural sovereignty of God. When you pray in tongues, you are assured of the supernatural sovereignty of God because you know you're praying in a language that you never ever learned and that nobody but God could be the one giving you these words to bubble up and flow out of you and to reach out to people and to do great works for the Lord in drawing people into the kingdom. One last testimony before I go. I remember years ago when I was, uh, my husband has gone on to be with the Lord now. He went to be with the Lord in 2007. And I remember during the time that we were separated and divorced when he was here on earth, we went through hard, hard times together. We finally pulled it together at the end, and before he went to be with the Lord, God made everything all right. We got remarried, and I'm telling you, it was glorious. But there was a time that he was a drug addict. There was a time that he was an awesomely wonderful man when he was sober. But when he would get high, or he would get drunk, or he would be on some kind of of, of, of influence other than what he needed to be influenced by at the time, which was the Holy Spirit. <laughs> he could be the most brutal individual. I mean, I went through being battered. I went through all of those things, being abused as a wife. But when he was sober, he was the sweetest man you ever wanted to know. But when we were divorced, and I could only remember the bad things. One night, the Holy Spirit told me to pray for him. Now, he had been a drug addict for 22 years. 
I married him fresh out of high school. I didn't have very good memories at that moment when God told me to pray for him. But I had been saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, and I knew to simply obey God. In the middle of the morning, I got up and began to pray for him. And I began to cry out for him, and I didn't know what I was praying about. God told me to do it. So I yielded to this awesome gift of praying in tongues. And I began to just sobre koroboshata, risore mahasito roboshanda, father zebre koroboshika, Lord God, feel ikondoria braka. I would just call his name and pray in tongues. That's all I knew to do. But at the end of a long period of time of praying in tongues, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, He is delivered. Long story short, a man who had been addicted to drugs for over 22 years, that particular night in a bar in Third Ward, heard the voice of God speak to him, went home to his grandmother's house, fell on his knees and asked Jesus to come into his heart and be the Lord of his life. And from that day to the day he went to be with the Lord, he walked a saved life before God. What did I pray that broke him through that time? I'm sure his mother had prayed, other people had prayed. I had prayed before, but that night in intense prayer and only praying in the Holy Ghost, not trying to let my mind figure it out, not letting my emotions get involved, not letting my hurt feelings take over. I yielded to the Spirit of God and he received his deliverance. What am I saying to you today? I'm saying no matter where you are, what you're doing, what you're involved in, and what you're praying for, this is a season in this 2019 with all we're facing in our personal lives and in this nation, it is time that you unleash the tongues. God bless you.